All right, let's conclude uh, lesson 2.7. This has been the longest set of videos in the history of math videos. All right, so any case, let's, uh, let's look at this quickly. We have two theorems, and then we can do some things. All right, we have two theorems, and we can do some things. So um, there's a theorem called the complex conjugate theorem that says if SF is a polynomial with real coefficients, and that's the only polynomial we've been dealing with so far. That's our definition of a polynomial. And this is an imaginary zero of f, then this is also a zero. So if I tell you this is a zero, then you know, oh, here's another zero, the conjugate, the complex conjugate. Okay, This is the complex conjugate of this. Therefore, it's called the complex conjugates theorem. Just a little result that you can use. Okay, Then... Uh, there's a corresponding irrational conjugates theorem. It says, suppose f is a polynomial function with rational coefficients. Rational, not real. Mm. Okay. Uh, in other words, not irrational coefficients. And a and b are rational numbers such that root b is irrational. So root b is irrational. So that's like a root 3, something like that. Um, if this is a 0 then this is also a zero. So again, if a plus root b is a zero, then its conjugate a minus root b is also a zero. This is the irrational conjugate if b is irrational. That's why it's called that. Okay, so it's just an information. If I, if I know this, then I can assume that's also happening. If I know this, then I can assume that's also happening. And that helps me write polynomial functions. So if I only have partial solutions to a polynomial function and I can write them. Why would this happen? Uh, tricky question. Okay, Why would you have a situation where I know some of the zeros but not all of them? I don't know. Uh, it's a good question. right? Uh, I have critical students sometimes go, why are we doing this? If I know this, I would know everything. And that's true. That's true. So um, we're trying to just show you how to write an equation if you know its roots. This is going backwards. I already know the answers, and I'm trying to come up with what could that polynomial look like. All right? Um, yeah. So in any case, there's a procedure here you can use to do this. Um, and I'll let you read that. I'm not going to read that with you. You can read that. I'm just going to do some examples with you. Okay. I'm just going to do some examples with you, and then, uh, you know, you know how to use this, right? Then the procedure, you can read the procedure and go, oh, okay, that's what the procedure says. <laughs> or you can read it first and then do the examples here. Okay, you can pause the video and do the examples. All right, so um, here's what it says. It says, uh, write a polynomial function of least degree. So we're going to write a polynomial degree is at least, is a minimum degree. Okay, it could have a higher degree, but we're writing a minimum degree, right? That has rational coefficients, a leading coefficient of 1, and the given zeros. You'll see our technique, we can't really come up with anything else than a leading coefficient of 1, and just use the zeros they gave you. So here's the zeros they gave me. So what this means is this. x is equals to negative 1. That's what this means. x equals 2. That's what this means. x equals to 4. That's this one. Now what we do is work this backwards and turn those into factors of my polynomial. So to turn this into a factor, you should remember this is what we did when we spoke about synthetic division. This becomes, just take the 1 over. So let me do this. You just take the 1 over. So you get x plus 1 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. Take it back this way, subtract it both sides. Uh, subtract the 4 both sides, x minus 4 equals 0. And that this gives me my factors because this is the reverse of the zero product property. The reverse of the zero product property. So there's a polynomial that has these factors. And that's how I usually go this way around to come up with the solutions. Okay, So we are reversing the process for solving a polynomial including reversing the zero product property, okay? So that's what we get, that's what we get, all right? And so 
All I have to do now to come up with my polynomial, write a polynomial function. That's the question. Just write a polynomial. It's just distribute. Now, this is not supposed to be too bad for you. This is just, uh, we said our strategy would be foil the back one first because you've learned how to work with something that looks like this. Okay? And if you foil the back one, you get x squared minus 6x plus 8. Right? If you foil it. And then now what you're doing is just uh, distributing this. So let me switch to some different colors. I'm distributing the x in here. Okay? So I'll do that in blue, so that's x cubed, and we can drop this parenthesis, we're gonna foil everything. x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x. That's not too bad. And then let me use a different color. Then I'm gonna do this, okay? So one times anything is that same thing, so I can just literally write this down. I don't really have to try and foil that or distribute that, okay? And now all I'm doing is combining like terms. So let's write our final answer here. f of x is a polynomial of least degree, and we must put it in standard form decreasing order. Okay, so I have negative 5x squared, 8, that's plus 2x, plus 8. There it is. Okay, uh, the, the leading coefficient is 1. There she is. And it has the given zeros. There they are. And this is the polynomial. Okay, it's that simple. All right, that was simple compared to what we're about to do next. Okay, so the next one, not so easy. I'm going to erase this all so I have some more space here. Okay, uh, this is not that straightforward. So this one is where the these two theorems come in. So this one gives me an irrational zero. So then I know I have another irrational zero, the conjugate of that one, okay? And so when I do this, I say, ah, I need to come up with a polynomial, but these are not the only zeros. If they tell me this, then that implies that one minus root five is also a zero by the irrational, oh, uh, irrational conjugates theorem, okay? Irrational conjugates theorem tells me this is also true. So I have actually have three zeros. So here's where I have four, one plus root five, and one minus root five. These are actually the zeros that I have to work with. Let me switch to a different color, okay? And so what you do is same thing. You say what this means is x is four, x is one plus root five, and x is 1 minus root 5. Okay, those are my three zeros. Then, again, move everything to the left-hand side and write this as a factor. Okay, so this comes from this. x minus 4 equals 0. If I subtract 4 both sides, this is a bit more tricky. This comes from x minus 1 minus root 5. If I subtract both of these things this way, uh, oh, sorry, and equals zero. And then this comes from, subtract both of these, x minus one plus root five equals zero. Okay, that's a bit more tricky, but that's, you're just doing the same process, it's just a bit more, a few more terms. So here are the, fa oh, not like that, here are the factors that I would have that comes from my polynomial as I'm solving it. So we can write something to start. f of x is x minus 4, x minus 1 minus root 5, and x minus 1 plus root 5. Okay, uh, That is what these three factors, where they came from, from a polynomial using zero product property. Okay, So I have that. Now, something to notice. Something interesting and tricky to notice. Not that simple, but once you do a few of them, it will pop out at you, okay? How do I now foil that? Ooh, that looks uncomfortable, okay? That looks uncomfortable. Here's a strategy, here's a strategy. So, group things together. If you just look at it and group things together intelligently, you end up doing something nice and simple. 
So here it is. Let me zoom in here. Uh, look at this and this. Okay, carefully. What I have here, if I look at this and say, how about I just put parentheses around this one, and then I put parentheses around this one, that looks a lot like a sum and difference. Okay, a sum and difference. In other words, I have exactly the same parentheses here as I do here. I have exactly the same number here as I do here, except the signs are opposite. That's what we call a sum and difference. And it's actually very, very easy to FOIL, easy to multiply. Okay, So let me switch back here. What we have is f of x equals x minus 4. And then this is a sum and difference. So in a sum and difference, you multiply the first term by the first term. So you get x minus 1 times x minus 1. That's x minus 1 squared. And then the last term times the last term, which is root 5 times root 5 is just 5. And the sign in between them is negative. Okay, Because a difference of squares, this is a difference of squares, goes to a sum and difference, or vice versa. Okay, So that's what I have. It's, that looks very tricky, but actually not that bad. Right? Just recognize... If I creatively group things together, it works like this. Now, you can just do what we did before, okay? Foil this thing. So that's just, now you know how to do that straight out. So this is x squared uh, minus 2x plus 1 minus 5. You should not have to foil that out by using parentheses and stuff, okay? And then f of x equals x minus 4. And then you get x squared minus 2x minus 4. And now you can just do the same thing we did earlier. Okay, Do the same thing. You're saying this times this, this times this, this times this. And that yields the following. Parentheses can be dropped. x cubed minus 2x squared minus 4x. And let me use a different color again. This one this one, this one, so minus 4x squared plus 8x plus 16, okay? And if you s combine like terms, what you get here is x cubed, done. These two minus 6x squared, happy. There, plus 4x, beautiful, plus 16, okay? That is a polynomial of least degree with co leading coefficient 1. This is one polynomial that satisfies uh, these criteria, that has these zeros. Okay, It's only one of them. There are uh, many others, but we found one. Okay, That's that. Let me quickly get to the next one, and then we'll be out of here. This video is also getting super long. All right. Uh, next one is this. Now, of course, we're going to use the other theorem, which is the complex conjugates theorem, okay? And that says, if I have one complex zero like this, then I know the complex conjugates theorem says that the con complex conjugate of this is also a zero. So the complex conjugate of this is just 3 plus i, okay, 3 plus i. So I know that by, by the complex conjugates theorem, I know this, All right? So same thing, proceed like this, say this means x equals 3, this means x equals 3 minus i, this means x equals 3 plus i. And then we write this as factors, okay? So subtract everything, so this means x minus 3 is 0, x minus 3 plus i is 0, and x minus 3 minus i is 0. Again, we're just taking everything over, just taking everything over uh, by subtracting them from both sides. Okay, And so here's what I have, and then what I can do is just uh, treat these as factors. Treat them as factors, and so we can write the beginnings of our polynomial. 
f of x must be x minus 3, x minus 3 plus i, x minus 3 minus i. And lo and behold, what is happening? Check it out. Again, I can group these two, group them, okay? And then it looks an awful lot like a sum and difference. These two are the same, these two are the same, and their signs are opposite. Hey, that's a sum and difference. So, let's do that. I just do f of x equals x minus 3, and then FOIL that as a sum and difference. So x minus 3 times x minus 3, that's x minus 3 squared, sorry, that's a square. And then this one, that is i times i, that's i squared. But you know that i squared is just negative 1, isn't it? i squared is just negative 1. Okay, so you put negative 1, so negative 1. But now careful. This is a plus times a minus, and the sum and difference, then this is a minus, okay? So maybe it's better if you just write it like this so that you don't mess up initially, i squared, all right? And then we can simplify it from there. So f of x is x minus 3, and this you should know, x squared minus 6x plus 9. And now I have i squared is negative 1, so this is negative 1 times negative 1, that's plus 1. Okay, then f of x is x minus 3, x squared minus 6x plus 10. That's what I have. Okay, and then you just do the same old, same old. So I'm going to go faster here, not switch colors, all that uh, sexy stuff, and I'm just going to go through and do it. So x cubed minus 6x squared plus 10x minus 3x squared plus 18x minus 30, okay, just like that. And then you just finally combine like terms. x cubed minus 9x squared plus 28x minus 30, okay? And there is the polynomial of least degree. I hope this helped you guys. Uh, videos are long, but you have a long class session to look at them. Okay, bye-bye.